Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a look at the Morse Kohansky 2 Kilo Survival Kit. So stick around. Welcome back. Now, I've got my scale out, and I've got my 2 Kilo Survival Kit by Morse Kohansky, and I'm going to weigh it for you so you guys can see. All right, it's weighed up. And if you guys take a look, all right, if I can get it close enough to focus, there we go. It's just under two kilos, the inside circle being kilos, outside being pounds. The tent behind the kit is designed to give to students at uh, the survival school that Morse Kohansky taught at before he passed away. And it's to help them, help enable them to survive. Now, it teaches them uh, basically two tenets that are kind of the hallmarks of Morse Kohansky's survival training. One being hydration as well as thermoregulation, okay, and the second being sleep, okay, so things that tie into getting a good night's rest, typically four hours or so with at least two hours of rapid eye movement phase sleep is enough to rejuvenate the body or at least gain that energy and mental focus and clarity to enable survival. And then staying hydrated Clearly, in a boreal region where Morse Kohansky used to teach and live, the hydration factor is incredibly important, and it's incredibly important anywhere for the human body to remain hydrated. But this is my kit, and you guys can see two kilos. Why don't we dive right in? All right, guys, so here is our two kilo kit. Now, the first item being the obvious one is a pot. Now, the pot needs to be uh, enough for seven cups of volume that's 56 ounces if we're going to go with the actual seven cups that Morse Kohansky uh, prescribes in this kit okay so this one is a 60 ounce solo stove pot so I meet that criteria right off the bat it also has a hanger on it which uh, you can suspend over a fire with the added feature of these handholds on it so I can safely remove it in and out of the fire if I have to okay now the, uh, the lid is supposed to stay on when you pour. Notice I'm pouring right now, or simulating that pouring, so uh, the lid stays on. And we meet all the criteria that Morse Kohansky needs in a good uh, survival kit pot, or at least the pot for the first item, okay? Now let's go ahead and crack this open, and we'll take a look at the items themselves. Now, the first item is going to be a compass combined with a whistle. Now the compass and whistle um, for signaling, whistling for signaling obviously, and then the compass for orienteering. I have my homemade pace beads right here if you guys can see those. All right, made out of crown knots with 550 cord uh, for the purposes of uh, counting distance as I traverse. And then I have my aluminum tape just over the top of my MC2 right here for the purposes of finding it. If I just happen to drop it at night, okay, I can find it and pick it up quickly. But that's, these are going to be the first two items, the whistle and the compass. Okay, I'll put those right in the lid there. Now, the next two items I want to show kind of go together with constructing a survival shelter for the purposes of thermoregulation. That's going to be a mylar blanket and then a polyethylene sheet. This sheet is wrapped up right now and it's 9 feet by 12 feet and then the mylar blanket is uh, roughly 6 feet by 5 feet. Okay and so with these two items in conjunction you can make a Morse Kohansky super shelter. So you create that greenhouse effect with the mylar or with the polyethylene and then a reflector with the mylar space blanket that reflects that heat and keeps it internal into the shelter and thus sustaining a um, warm climate or a microclimate in a colder environment okay so we have those two items right here next he calls for a 55 gallon drum liner now these things are ubiquitous now in a lot of good kits 55 gallon drum liner itself can be used as a poncho it can be used as a browse bed it can be used to collect materials it can be used for an emergency poncho uh, it can be used for a lot of things and these are easily replaceable and cheap which is kind of the hallmarks of a lot of these things uh, a lot of these items easily replaceable but still accomplish um, a fair bit for survival okay so we've got that next he calls for just a small uh, first aid kit he specifically talks about having band-aids that are H shape I think you guys might be able to see that H shape bandages which is what I've gone to as well um, because they cover 
knuckles and those hard to uh, those hard to reach areas in the hands where we tend to have the largest or the most amount of cuts from using a knife, okay? Um, definitely along the knuckles here and you guys can see I've got plenty of scars to prove that theory correct Okay, so a small first aid kit for the purposes of cuts and minor abrasions um, On to your hands and to your body. Okay next he calls for duct tape. What can't you do with duct tape? All right another ubiquitous item similar to uh, 55 gallon drum liner for a lot of survival kits so duct tape you can use for uh, emergency medical items, you can use it for construction, repair, you can use it uh, for fire starting, you can use it for a lot of things, and so duct tape is going to be in there. Next he calls for a candle, this is just a beeswax candle that is capable of heating the internal structure of a shelter. This candle will give off roughly 300 BTUs, which is similar to that of the human body. The human body gives off a little over 300 BTUs, so it's just like having a battle buddy in a shelter with you in an enclosed space that's ventilated, of course, uh, that provides some heat for uh, you know, to keep that shelter warm. And so that candle still good for seeing at night or using as a night light and then for starting fire as well or to keep a fire going. Okay, so we've got that candle. Okay, next he calls for a sewing kit. Now this is just my sewing kit slash repair kit slash hunting kit that I had in sear training. And I've got fishing line. I've got some hooks in the tape back here. Uh, that I can get to quickly with some razor blades. I've got wire, safety pins, and then I have sewing needle and thread that's already uh, ready to go that I can quickly access for uh, repair or to conceal items in clothing. But he calls for a sewing kit with just some needle and thread and maybe some wire and hooks and some of those other things uh, that can go into a sewing kit, okay? Next, he calls for tinder. Now, I'm pretty sure in his videos, um, he uses just homemade tinder, uh, cotton balls, Vaseline or something, but here I have uh, three cubes of wet fire. Wet fire being a great fire tinder, especially in a cold environment, a wet environment, this stuff will get going with just the minimal uh, spark, and I have three cubes here for fire, okay? All right, next he calls for a bunch of matches, weatherproof matches here. I've got my OD green case with a striker on top screwable lid that's waterproof and then I've got a bunch of uh, matches inside for the purpose of fire lighting. with a spare striker in there uh, as part of the kit, okay, for fire lighting. Uh, also for fire lighting, he recommends having a uh, ferrule rod. Uh, obviously very big on a ferrule rod. Uh, thousands and thousands of strikes from this basic ferrule rod with a striker attached, although I can use the back of my knife uh, to get a fire going. But this with a uh, decent tinder that you can find from the landscape will save your matches, save your candle, and even save your wet fire tinder. All right, next is 550 cord. He's got 550 cord in his kit. Um, obviously agree 550 cord uh, ubiquitous once again and a lot of survival kits can be broken down and can do a multitude of things. Cordage is incredibly important, one of the hardest things to recreate in the wild, so that's going to be part of the kit. Okay. Next he calls for a signaling mirror. Even though I have a signaling mirror in my compass, we still have this one right here that I can use to blind you guys real quick. All right, and then signal. A signaling mirror, still very uh, important and popular in survival kits. I'm a huge believer in signaling mirrors, and I've got my sheath right here to keep it safe, okay? So I'm gonna have that signaling mirror. The last thing that's in here that I put in, and he's got it in a different kit, but it still fits in this kit. It meets the weight requirements. It meets a lot of the requirements inside this kit, is a saw blade. If I can get it out without cutting myself. Now this is a 30 inch saw blade, so you guys can see, and I can construct 
a hacksaw out of natural materials and then I already have the blade in here and I can use small bits of wood as the plugs to secure both ends and 30 inches is good he says that uh, anything less than an arm's length is uh, getting pretty short okay and then the last thing he wants in a kit is uh, something you should have on you at all times and that is just a simple knife here I have uh, my neck knife which is the Karamat uh, companion knife by LT Wright and carbon steel knife very small knife but it gets the job done you can see uh, Morse Kohansky with survival knives his opinion or his uh, uh, critique of a survival knife is something that has a cutting edge about as wide as your hand like this one I'm shown can be skinny on the on the spine this is a uh, 1 8 I believe and then it's got a hard 90 degree edge on the back of the knife for the purposes of striking that ferro rod. Um, but the primary purpose of this is for feather sticking, for fine crafting, and for a basic bush tool to use. So this is gonna be that final but most important item that every survivalist should have on them, okay? So guys, this is the kit in its entirety. You've got all two kilos here plus another uh less than a key you know less than a pound right here in the knife maybe you know eight or ten ounces uh for a knife with sheath that comprise the entirety of this kit okay morse kohansky two kilo survival kit Hope you liked that video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment in the comment section, let me know what you guys think. I thank you guys for all your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares, and I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.